Good morning, YouTube. This is New Life for Jen or Jen. Today <clears throat> is August 11th, 2011, and tomorrow will be my week 21 post op lap band. Uh, my surgery was March 18th, 2011. My starting weight was 264.8. My weight last week was 189.2. Two. That was on Friday when I made my video. I think it was 189.8. So from then to then, I my Fridays are my weighing. I'm doing this today on Thursday because I probably won't be around tomorrow to weigh in. So I weighed in today. Today my weight was 187.6. So from last Friday to today, um, it was a 1.6 pound loss, which I'm happy with. Uh, my numbers have been great every week. So yes, this is a little bit of a lower number, but that's fine with me. Um, I just wanted to talk about a couple things today. Um, watch some videos about um, losing weight too fast and having sagging skin. And I just want to let everybody know that that's not the case. Um, as of today, I've lost 77 pounds. I'm 21 weeks post-op. I had a two-week pre-op diet, so if you want to consider 23 weeks of being out of the actual beginning of the process um, and I don't really have sagging skin and compared to a lot of people that I'm, I'm friends with on YouTube and Facebook I'm a little bit older I'm gonna be 34 this year so um, you know when you're in your 20s I'm sure it's a lot easier to tone and not have sagging skin as much as other people but I'm not having that issue and I think I'm not having that issue because I'm doing a little bit more toning than I am actually exercising. So not necessarily are you going to have all the sagging skin because you either lose your weight fast or because, you know, you're just, you, you were big and you had weight loss surgery. Granted, my weight was 264.8 when I started. Um, I know people started a higher weight, so I don't know. Maybe that does make a difference um, if you do have more sagging skin or not. Um, the only place I noticed that I might have sagging skin is maybe on my inner thigh and, you know, just a little bit on my arms. I mean, it's not on my arms so bad right now where I'd be like, oh my gosh, I have to have plastic surgery done. So, but just because you lose your weight fast does not necessarily mean you're going to have to have plastic surgery. You're going to have sagging skin or whatever. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is um, a comment was made about... Um, if you're doing this low carb thing, when you stop doing it, you know, it's all going to come right back. I've come to the fact and I've realized that I always used to be one of those people that used the excuse of, oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm the person that would never be thin. You know, I don't have the right bone structure for it. Oh, my hips are big. My shoulders are big. Whatever that excuse was, that doesn't mean you can't get down to where your normal BMI should be. That doesn't mean you're going to look like a skeleton or whatever at your goal weight. My goal weight's 150. You know, I might go to 140s, high 130s, whatever. You know, whatever my body feels right at is what I'll end up going to. My goal was 150 when I started this. So that's my first goal. You know, I know goals change as you get closer to your goal weight. But what I wanted to say was is that I think we all build up that excuse in ourselves to make ourselves feel better that I was never meant to be that skinny or I like being bigger or I like being having meat on my bones or whatever. I mean, that's fine. If that's how you want to do your journey and that's how you want to, you know, you want that, that's fine. Um, I know my, I've, I think I said this in a video before, my husband just, he wants me to be done now. He's happy with the way I am now. He doesn't think I need to lose any more weight. I want to, you know, at least get to 150. Um, am I going to look like a skeleton at 150? Hell no. Am I going to look at it like a skeleton at 130 pounds? Probably not. I mean, we have no clue what our bodies are going to look like as the age that we are at when we started this journey at that weight. You know, you're going to be able to tell as you get down lower and you'll make that decision for yourself. But, you know, people that are, you know, gung-ho on this, that's their personal choice. They're learning, even if they're going full speed ahead at this and getting to their goal weight as fast as possible, that does not mean that they're psycho-obsessive about their lap band. That just means that they've waited long enough for the surgery and they freaking want it that bad. I want it that bad. 
You know, I, I eat things sometimes I shouldn't eat. Everybody does. That's just normal. You can't deprive yourself of everything. But I don't think we should sit there and lie to ourselves if we're making more bad choices than we are good choices. I don't care if it's in moderation or not. That You will not succeed with this journey if you can't learn to eat the right things. You know, the whole carb thing, people's bodies are all different. Some of us process carbs different. We're not doing this just as a carb diet to lose weight. We're doing it so that we can regulate our glucose in our body. We're doing this so that we can learn the things. We can learn the level of carbs that our body knows how to work at. And maybe when you lose another 40 pounds, you'll be able to increase your carb count because your body learned how to process that glucose better. I don't know. I, I just... I get upset sometimes when people think that, you know, we're crazy obsessed about this. I'm not crazy obsessed. I'm sure there are people out there that are. I weigh myself twice a week. I'm not crazy, crazy psycho about exercising and burning a thousand calories a day. Will I get to that point? Maybe. Probably not because what I'm doing now is something I'm going to be able to do for the rest of my journey, for the rest of my life making these decisions, learning to live a healthier lifestyle. Yes, there's always temptations out there and there's always going to be things out there that we're going to want to eat and we're, we can eat it as long as it's in moderation. But if you're doing that four or five times a week, that's not trying to live a healthy lifestyle. That is just tricking yourself into believing that you can get away with it as long as you only eat the serving size. Well, a serving size of a Big Mac is a one sandwich and that's a thousand calories. So, you know, you can't just say, I'm going to live in moderation by serving size, because if you do that, you're going to be right back where you started. Um, the reason why we got this way is because we made bad choices. And just because you have the lap band now, and you make a bad choice, but you're eating less of it, you're not learning how to live a healthier lifestyle. You're just learning how to trick yourself into believing that you're learning a living or healthy, you're learning to live a healthier lifestyle. Um... I think that everything we put in our mouths right now is, you know, this is your body. You only live once. I mean, if anybody should know that, it's me. I lost both my parents in their early 50s. And to me, learning how to live healthy and eat healthy is only helping my body last longer. You know, eating these processed foods, it's going to be the death of all of us. I mean, it's just plain and simple. It is not good stuff in there. It's not good stuff for our kids. It's not good stuff for us. And until our mentality changes of, you know, you know, now I crave carrots as a snack. Carrots. You know, granted, carrots have a higher carb content than most vegetables, but guess what? I'm going to eat me some carrots, and I'm going to dip them in fat-free ranch. And you know what? I don't feel guilty if I eat carrots. Or I don't feel guilty if I eat. But I'm not, you know, picking, okay, well, I'm going to have a slice of cake, or I'm going to have ice cream. Yes, those things I do incorporate sometimes when it's a special occasion or whatever, but if you learn to remove those things and not make them so much of a part of, I'm not going to deprive myself, well, yes, you shouldn't deprive yourself, but you shouldn't be eating it three or four times a week. That's just, you know, if, you, if you're on this journey, you, you're, you were mentally supposed to be to a point where you were willing to change your diet. You were willing to change your lifestyle. This band is not going to help you pick the right foods to put in your mouth. It's just going to help you contain on how much you eat. Now, if I eat eight ounces of food, I'm going to pick eight ounces of food that's healthy. What is one of the lap band rules? Protein first. There is no gosh darn protein in McDonald's food. There is no gosh darn protein in fast food. You know what? If you're going out to eat, then you make the best choice you can. But tricking yourself into believe just because you're eating eight ounces and you're doing the portion control and it's bad food, it's, it, this journey is not going to work. It's not going to work. You're going to end up right back where you were because you're not learning to eat a healthier lifestyle. And I guess I was ready more than maybe other people were. You have to be mentally ready or this journey is just not going to work. And it's a mental game every single day. You know, you, like, you have to trick your stomach into doing certain things and you have to trick your body into not craving certain things. So that's what I wanted to say about that. Um, was a little just frazzled about comments that were made about people that are gun-ho about lap band. I'm gun-ho. I paid for this out of pocket. It wasn't free. It wasn't included with my insurance. So guess what? I'm going to treat this lap band like it's like it's a $40,000 car and I'm going to maintain it and I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do with it and it does work if you follow the rules. But that's all I got to say guys. Have a great week. Talk to you next week.